Excel VBA automation is mainly about manipulating Excel objects such as worksheets and cells. But before we do something with an object, we need to identify it correctly using the Excel object model. This lesson will look at the first part of this rule that is identifying objects. Our goal for this video is to read the value in cell A1 which is in sheet 1 of the workbook that we are currently going to write our code in. And following our rule to manipulate objects in Excel, we first need to identify the object. And the object that we are concerned with is a cell which can be represented as a range object. So let's look at our object hierarchy that we have for Excel. An Excel application consists of workbooks, worksheets, charts, shapes, cells, etc. These are all objects and they can be arranged in a hierarchy under the application object. The application object represents the entire Excel application. For any object in Excel, the application object will always be the top level object. This hierarchical structure signifies that if we want to get to any object, we need to follow the hierarchy starting from the top level object down to the object that we are after. So for this exercise, our starting point is the application object and the destination is the range object. Let's get started. Here we are in a blank saved workbook with two sheets. Within sheet 1, we can see my name in cell A1. Let's go to the VB editor Alt F11. In a new module, let's create a sub. So the keyword sub and a space. Let's give the sub a name. I'm going to call it test. Press enter tab. We're going to display the name from cell A1 into the image it window. So we will use the debug.print method. Space. And let's start with the top level object. So we will type in the name application. To get to the next object in our hierarchy, we need to add a dot. And a list appears. This is called IntelliSense. It provides us a list of members that are available for this object. And members can be the object's properties or methods. And as a quick recap, properties are characteristics of an object and methods are actions that we can perform with the object. Following our hierarchy, the next object that we are after is the workbooks collection object. This collection object is available as a property of the application object. So we can search for the word workbooks in this list or we can start typing in the letters until we see workbooks selected in the list. And once it's selected, press tab to accept the selection. The workbooks collections property of the application object will return back a workbooks collection which represents all the workbooks that are currently open within Excel. I only have the current workbook open. Next, we need to specifically access our current workbook object which is an item within the workbooks collection. To access a specific object within a collection, we need to use the item property. So dot and choose item tab. Now, we need to specify which item we want to access. We can do this by providing the index number of the item within the workbooks collection or by simply providing the name of the item. The index number will be 1 since there is only one workbook open. So there is only one item within the workbooks collection. But we will go with the workbook name for now. We need to provide the name within parenthesis. And since the name is a text or rather string, we need to place it within double quotes. So this is the file name of the current workbook. Close the double quotes. Close the parenthesis. But item is the default property of a collection. So we really don't need to mention it. And this line of code can be simplified to just the workbooks collection and the name of the file. The next object in the hierarchy is the worksheets collection object. So press dot search for worksheets. We can even use the sheets collection. Sheets can accommodate both standard worksheets and chart sheets while the worksheets collection refers just to standard worksheets. We will continue with worksheets tab and within the worksheets collection, we want to access sheet one. This logic is similar to the workbooks collection. So open parenthesis, open double quotes, provide the name of the worksheet, close double quotes, close parenthesis. Next is the range object. A cell can be accessed via the cells object or the range object. In the cells object, we would need to refer to a cell using the row number and the column number. And in the range object, we need to provide the cell reference in the A1 style notation, where A is the column and 1 is the row. Working with A1 notation is visually more convenient. So let's proceed with that. Press dot 
and we can notice that IntelliSense doesn't work anymore. This is a bit of a quirk in Excel, which I will explain later on in this video. For now, we will need to manually type out the rest of the code. Range, open parenthesis, provide the cell reference in double quotes. And now, finally, we have successfully identified the Excel object that we want to modify through our code. It may seem like a very long reference. There are shortcuts as well, such as using active objects, which we will look at shortly. However, starting the reference from the application object down to the target object is the formal way to reference any Excel object. This style of referencing is called a fully codified reference. Well, technically, we should use the name of the library at the start for it to be a fully qualified reference. The Excel object library is called Excel, so we could mention it if we wanted. A fully qualified reference means that the reference that we have provided for the object is completely unambiguous, so that VBA will not mistake this range for any other range in any other workbook. Now, it's not really necessary to mention the library, so we can delete it off. We will talk more about libraries in the lesson on object libraries and browser. For now though, let's complete the exercise. We want to display the value from cell A1. The second part of the manipulation rule states that once we have identified the object, we can now perform some action with this range object. So we will use the value property of the range object to return back the cell's contents. So dot and value. And that's it. Let's run this macro. Press F5 or the play button and the value in cell A1 gets displayed. For the rest of this video, we will look at different ways to shorten this reference. Till now, we have assumed that the Excel object hierarchy follows a single path. That is, if we want to get to the range object, there is only one fixed path. This is a false assumption. There can be more than one way to access an object. Let's talk about the global object. The Excel object library provides us a global object with several members, including the application object. This list shows us the popular members of the global object. Any member shown here can be directly accessed without the need for mentioning the application object. So let's come back to our code. Since workbooks is a global member, we can remove the reference to the application object. So delete. Next, we don't need to provide the file name for a current workbook within which we are writing our macro code. There is a property called this workbook, which we can use instead. And since this workbook is a global member as well, we can access it directly. So let's remove the workbooks collection and type in this workbook dot tab. Let's run the macro to make sure that our code is working correctly. The value gets printed. So this reference is correct as well. I think we have made this range reference more manageable now. Next, let's talk about active objects. We will concentrate on active workbook, active sheet, an active cell. Active means being in focus. If we had three workbooks open and we were working on the current one, then our current workbook would be the active workbook. But since there is only one workbook open, our current workbook is the active workbook by default. We have two sheets in our workbook. Let's manually select any cell in sheet 2. Sheet 2 is in focus now and it's the active sheet. We can prove this by displaying the name of the active sheet. Let's go back to our code. I'm going to comment this line of code so that VBA ignores it. Comment needs an apostrophe. Enter onto a new line. So let's display the name of the active sheet. Dot, use the name property. Run the macro. And we see that the active sheet is sheet 2. We can even change the active sheet programmatically. Let's make sheet 1 the active sheet. For that, we can use the select method or the active method. So I'm going to just copy the reference for the sheet object and we'll use the activate method. And after we've activated sheet one, let's print out the name of the active sheet again. Okay, let's run the code. So the first debug.print statement tells that sheet two was the active sheet. Then we activated sheet one and the name of the active sheet has now become sheet one. And finally, we have the active cell. This is the cell that is currently active. If a mouse cursor is clicked onto any cell, that cell would be active. Okay, so how is this useful? Since our current workbook is the active workbook, we could use it in place of this workbook. So instead of this workbook, we could use active workbook. 
let's run the code works now let's click anywhere on sheet one go back to the code sheet one is now active and we can directly reference the active sheet to read the cell value so all we need to do is say active sheet and let's run the macro and my name gets printed again this time let's specifically click on cell a1 in sheet 1 go back to our code cell a1 is the active cell and now we can directly reference the cell itself and read its value so we don't even need this part so we'll print the value of the active cell run the macro the name gets printed great we have dramatically reduced the reference length now it may be tempting to use active objects However, when working with multiple objects, for example, multiple worksheets, we need to make sure to activate the worksheet before doing anything with it. Otherwise, VBA will continue on to make changes on the existing sheet, which may lead to unwanted consequences. Next, let's look at the range and worksheets object within the global object members. By definition, we can use a global member directly. But how can we use a range directly? without providing context of which worksheet or workbook it's in. Well, we can because the active object is always assumed. Let's activate sheet one. But since worksheets is a global object, we can use it directly. So this code is the same as this code. And when we don't provide a parent object reference, the active parent object is assumed. So the previous and current line of code are equivalent and hence we can use this shorter version directly. Now let's read the value from cell A1. We could go like But again, since range is also a global object, we can use it directly. In this case, both the active sheet and the active workbook are assumed. So we can just delete it off. And let's just print out the value to make sure that our code is working as expected. Run the macro, the name gets printed. This style of directly referencing objects is more popular and you'll see it all over the internet. However, the same warning for active objects applies here. When dealing with multiple objects, we need to take care to tell VBA specifically which object we are referring to. With that in mind, it's preferable to use the formal way of referencing which starts with the application or even the workbook object. It may seem long right now, but we can shorten it using object variables, which we will see in the next chapter. We had seen earlier that IntelliSense doesn't work when we put in a dot after the sheet object or even the worksheet object. So let's place a dot. There's no IntelliSense. Let's understand this on a high level. First, let's look at the workbooks object. VBA evaluates an item within the workbooks collection as a workbook object. This makes it clear for VBA to understand what object we are referencing. And hence, it's able to let us access the properties and methods of the workbook object within the workbooks collection via IntelliSense. However, VBA evaluates an item within the sheets or worksheets collection as a generic object and not a worksheet object. Hence, it cannot give us access to the properties and methods of a worksheet object, which is the reason why IntelliSense stops working. We'll deep dive more into this aspect in later lessons. For now, the point is that we would like to use IntelliSense after the worksheet so that we can easily navigate down to the cell or range object without typing from memory. One way around this issue is to use the worksheet codename directly which is the first name against the sheet in the project explorer. Now sheet one exists within the VBA project, which is its own hierarchy, where the VBA project is the top level object. First, let's change the code name by selecting the sheet in the project explorer and changing the name in the properties window. We will change it to WS1 tab. Let's type out a code now. We can specify the name of the library if we want, which is VBA project dot. We can see the members for this object, which are essentially the components within our Microsoft Excel objects and modules folder within our VBA project. So it's the worksheets, 
the workbook and even our current macro. Let's select the worksheet WS1 dot and we get IntelliSense. Let's complete our code. Dot our IntelliSense stays with us. Choose the value property, tab out, run the code to confirm. Great. We don't need to specify this library name though, so we can remove it. This is usually the preferred way to reference worksheets in our current workbook. Another way would be to assign the sheet object to a worksheet object variable. We'll look at this solution deeply in the next chapter on variables. And that was a deep dive into the object hierarchy. Now that we know how to identify an object with an Excel, next we'll look at how to manipulate that object.